Richard. Right. Thank you so Richard, much. Right. Incredible. Do you feel that uh, Hollywood is relying too strongly on special effects these days, that it's become de rigueur? You know, it's, be, it's special effects has become, in some ways, it's become, um, what's the hell is the thing, like like coffee. You buy coffee, it's a, it's a uh, what is the word? It's, it's something that people expect and, and they're, not, they're not so in awe by it anymore because you can do anything. Anything can be done now and, and, and all it requires is time and money. I mean the visual effects budgets for movies have gone from a few million to tens of millions. So, you know, we have rocket scientists and all that kind of stuff working on, on movies. So. I mean, it's a, it's all amazing, but it is, in a sense, you worry that it's, that people are going to wind up saying, "Enough already." And, uh, and, and go back to uh, to mono, as they say in the music business. You know, I don't think so. You know, I mean, I they still they still line up for the superheroes. You know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, did, were you involved with JPL and any of the uh, I uh, innovations? Jim, from I knew that? Jim Bland and, yeah. and, and those guys, uh, Richard Terrell. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew some of those guys, but no, not much. I mean, they were they were certainly influencing what I was doing yeah. in the digital world, and and you know, I mean, NASA's. In fact, when we were doing Star Wars, we were actually using NASA surplus parts to make stuff to do the movie. How did you get the parts from NASA? There's Apex Surplus and CNH Sales in Pasadena. Then they have all that stuff. It's like, you know, they get the, uh, they get, they get, um, what, do you, what do you say? They, they get what's left, <clears throat> and then they sell the parts. I mean, it's basically the the prototype makers <coughs> wind up going to to get parts to build their prototypes from other prototypes that have be become obsolete already. Do you feel that uh, America is losing its lead in uh, space? <laughs> We've got to watch out for China because they're spending a lot of money. And But Elon Musk and the Israelis maybe maybe may save us. In, I mean the, the private rockets? Huh? Private rockets? Private, private companies? rockets, all that stuff, yeah. I mean you have these guys I mean, you go to Israel, and it's like, I mean, it's like amazing. It's like they, they, they create more IPOs than, than, I think they're number two in the world behind the, the USA. Have, have you spent much time there? I spent about, I spent a few weeks there, yeah. Uh, what were your impressions that uh, defied expectations? Well, you know, you, you grew up thinking about Israel as the, as the, the promised land and, and all that. And I remember I read, uh, I read uh, you know, Mark Twain's story about how he traveled across Israel on a camel and there was nothing but sand. I didn't see that at all. I went to Israel and I saw this verdant country. I went all over the north. I didn't go to the south, but Israel, I went to, to Jude, huh? Haifa. You know, I, Golan Heights. I went to to the. I swam in the Dead Sea. You know, I, I mean, it's, I I think Israel is an incredible country. How do you feel about the politics of a American-Israel relationship? I think I think I think Obama blew it. I mean, I mean, what what's what's in his brain? I don't get it. Alienating. I mean, he's alienating the Jews, and I mean the Jews have given so much to us. I mean, why are we, why are we doing this? What are your concerns about an in incoming uh, Democrat administration? I don't think it's going to come. Is, is that a hope? She's going to make it. I don't think she can stumble to the, to the, to the uh, dais.